everybody! This video is on some tips for teaching loose leash walking. Frequently, I get asked the same question by clients as well as from YouTube or in emails that a person's dog has been walking nicely on leash after a lot of training and some time's gone by and now the dog is pulling again and uh, it feels overwhelming and what should they do to get the pulling to go away. So, um, in my opinion, some of the things that can really, really help is refreshing the dog on the leash pressure game. So after some time, if you haven't worked on it and every once in a while the dog pulls a little bit, they can start forgetting about that concept that pressure on the leash means orient back to the handler. So when clients tell me this, I suggest that they do at least 12 sessions on the leash pressure game inside the house, in their yard, in front of their house, and places that it's easy, using distractions that you make up so that you can work with your dog when they're 100% focused on the training rather than when they're excited and out and about. Check out the description below for a video tutorial on how to train the leash pressure exercise. Another really important thing to consider is that when a dog is not pulling and then pulling, it means that something's changed. So the dog could be getting overly stressed in a good way or a bad way that's making him forget all that he's learned and he's pulling. So he might be um, feeling negative emotional responses like he's nervous about something in the environment and that's speeding him up and making him forget to uh, practice impulse control and walk at the same pace as you so he wants to speed up. Um, or he's uh, having a positive emotional response and he's like, yeah, I got to get to that, I got to get to this. And that could be because he has not been in that environment before or something about it is novel and exciting. Maybe there's a new dog that's been up that street and he wants to sniff every single place that dog has been. Uh, maybe you're walking with a new dog or a person. Or it could be that uh, the dog is starting to anticipate something good that's going to happen that's further away. So for example, if you um, go to a baseball field where your dog is going to then run off leash, at first it's really easy to walk to the baseball field, but after a couple of repetitions, the dog might start actually to be pulling you towards the baseball field and stressed because um, he really wants to be in that field playing off leash and not <laughs> walking slowly at your side at a snail's pace. So in these situations, I suggest doing the same thing. Um, if the dog is nervous about the environment, I suggest choosing an environment the dog is least nervous about and working on settle on a mat. So the dog is just relaxing on a mat and getting reinforced for being in that environment. You could even do calm massage. So if the dog hasn't learned settle on a mat yet, you can practice that inside the house and in the yard first so the dog is finding it a calming, positive experience to be relaxing on the mat. Don't start with, um, with any dog with the settle outside first um, where they're excited or nervous. Uh, the same is true for dogs that are excited about the environment. They want to, going into the environment is predicting that they're getting to things that they're very excited about. So relaxing on a mat is a great way to teach them to calm down in those environments and that being out doesn't mean doing exciting things and rushing towards things they want to investigate. So what you can do is have the dog relax on the mat after training and then you can take little outings where you move from the mat to go and investigate the environment and then return to the mat so the dog can take a little break rather than keeping on going. The worst is sometimes for dogs if they're, if they're going in a circuit and they know the circuit, um, that's going to make them want to continue forward. So you can have the mat and you take little voyages away from the mat and return if the dog's getting too excited. And you can also practice things, for example, if you uh, have a house on a street that you walk on, instead of walking in the same circuit, you can be either random or if you really have an issue with pulling, you can walk back and forth in front of your house. So you walk a little bit one way, then you turn around and go the other way. And the great thing about this is that the dog has already smelled everything in that area, so they become less and less excited about going back and forth. And as they're succeeding, you can venture further and further away rather than going in a complete circuit. Now, 
If you need extra help with these exercises, I do actually have a six-week self-study course on my website called Leash Walking Connected on dogmantics.com that I'm very proud of that it, it's really helpful for people who need the steps broken up um, so that they know exactly what to train each week with each exercise to get their dog back on track to walking on a loose leash. But I do have a lot of free YouTube videos um, so the two that I talked about, Settle on the Mat, I will link in the description below. And then also I want to show you a game that you can play inside your house first to teach your dog to stop when you stop. And if you have multiple dogs, it's extremely important to play this game where you're practicing walking multiple dogs in your house first, in your backyard first, before trying to walk multiple dogs outside because things are going to go a little bit haywire and just the presence of the other dog on leash can make your dog um, very excited. So when first initiating having two dogs on leash on a walk, I suggest doing it in your living room and outside first, so being next to each other uh, has predicted in the past that they pay attention to you and get treats in a non-distracting environment rather than woohoo time to pull uh, my owner down the block. Teaching your dog to stop when you stop is a wonderful behavior to build your relationship with your dog so they're more likely to notice your behavior out and about on a walk because most likely without any training if you were to suddenly stop while your dog's walking forward, they're not going to notice and they're just going to hit the end of the leash. Um, another wonderful reason to teach this behavior if you have multiple dogs is that when you stop um, to let another dog sniff, maybe the other dog is near the grass and the other dog's on the side of the sidewalk that has cars, uh, that dog can politely wait while the other dog is sniffing. Now, in no way do I am I say, saying that all dogs should learn to walk next to you for walks. Um, what I think is more natural is for dogs to be off leash, enjoying and exploring and making choices and staying with you, um, or exploring the environment on a loose leash next to you. So you don't have to teach your dog to walk next to you um, for your dog's benefit, but when managing your dog in busy environments, say for example the city where you have to keep your dog close, or if you're going to a vet or there's an emergency, say you're evacuating for a fire, it's great to have this skill so your dog knows to stay near you, especially if you have multiple dogs and you need to have them all on leash um, to evacuate in an emergency or go to the vet or, or you're on vacation. Um, and, you're go and you've gone somewhere where there are more people. So that's why it's great to teach your dog to walk next to you, but there's no real benefit to it besides management. And it is, when you train it with positive reinforcement, it's a great way to build your relationship and connection with your dog. So the first step is simply feeding your dog at your side like this, multiple treats like this, and the reason you're doing that is because you're reinforcing your dog for staying still at your side. Because most dogs, if they're standing next to you, will gravitate to being in front of you so they can see you, see your face, and most people train their dogs in front of them like this. So what we're teaching the dog is to be at the side. So you can lure your dog back into the position if they go in front of you again, or if they go in front, you can simply take a step to the right and then begin the game again. Once your dog is reliably standing at your side, when you're standing, you can then take a step forwards, click, and reinforce your dog at your side before your dog has a chance to take a step in front of you. So you're going to take a step, click, and reinforce. If you have a tall dog, you can reinforce your dog right there in front of his face and then pull your hand behind your back so he's not just staring at your hand the whole time. Tug said, I can stare at your hand while it's behind your back. So if that's happening, you can make sure your dog is looking up here, then staring at the treat in your hand. Hi. Okay. So once you're taking a step, marking and reinforcing your dog at your side, you can then take a step and wait to see if your dog stops when you stop. So I'm going to take a step forwards, and I might have to say, let's go, Tug. Stop, mark, and reinforce. You can reinforce your dog for sitting, but there's no real reason that um, they need to sit at your side. So if your dog starts to sit, you can encourage them out of the sit.
by the way that you hold the treat. Are you ready? So I'm going to take a step. Let's go. Good. Good. It might take a few training sessions for your dog to get the idea of stopping when you stop, but once he's got it and you walk forwards and he stops when you stop, you can start adding steps. So you're going to take more steps before you stop and reinforce your dog. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good. If you have multiple dogs, once you've practiced with the dogs one-on-one -on, -one on this exercise, you can then start working with them together inside your house. This is also very helpful because you can start to understand how to manage both of their leashes in your hand or in both of your hands while you're still in the house and they're not pulling in every which way excited that they're next to each other on a walk. So um, I'm going to mark and reinforce them for being at my side like this. Good job, Tug. And then I'm going to take a step forwards, mark and reinforce. And as you can see, now they're having to wait as they watch the treats go to the other dog. So sometimes the dogs will want to go forwards towards each other to go see where their treat is going. Like Tug might go over here into Wish's space, and that's not going to be very fun. So um, this is great to work on in your house when they're not excited about being out and about. And then when you're out and about, maybe you won't even use treats uh, when working with both of the dogs. But if you have dogs that guard treats or they're just not good with, with each other, I suggest getting help from a professional trainer that doesn't use any forms of intimidation to work on this first. But one of the games you can work on first if you're working with multiple dogs together is teaching them to take turns for taking treats and I'll put that um, in the description below. Let's go. Good. Let's go. Here I'm playing the same game, but with both dogs on my left side. It can be useful to have all your dogs on one side of you. If you're using your body as a blocker, perhaps there's a child that's running around that wants to mess with your dogs, or maybe there's a dog that needs space, and that dog's going to be much more comfortable with your body blocking the view of your dogs. Or if your dog has an issue with other dogs, you can be the visual blocker for your dogs. Now I'm playing the same game with my dogs in their loose walking positions. I like to let them walk in front of me and at my side when they're in a big group so they have room to look around and explore. And as you can see, this exercise is a great exercise to get them all focused on me and my movement because when I stop, another dog might be needing to sniff or go to the bathroom and the other ones can wait. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel KikoPup, which gains you access to an extra members video a month by clicking the join button. See you later, guys.